All right, what's going on YouTube? So this is actually going to be a pretty quick one. Uh, it's just a tip that I found super helpful when I'm troubleshooting that I wanted to share with you guys. So what I'm going to talk about today is routing our tools through different proxies, but in particular, we're going to talk about routing them through a tool called Burp Suite. Um, and if you're used to web application pen testing or really pen testing in general, you, you probably are already familiar with this tool. It's really kind of like a staple in this space and like a must have. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you can route a tool. Uh, in particular, we're going to talk about GoBuster. And I'm going to show you how you can route that through Burp Suite to help you kind of troubleshoot things. And uh, well, you'll see. Let's just kind of dive in. Okay, so in this video, I'm actually going to be using a machine on the platform called Hack the Box. Um, this machine is called BART, and it lives at the IP address of 10.10.10.81. Um, now, this isn't like a walkthrough of that machine or anything like that. I'm just simply using it as an example uh, for like demonstration purposes of this video. So I'm going to go out and we're just going to browse to that address. And we can see right away, we get this awesome web page back, um, but it looks like it also redirected us to form.bart.htb instead of the 10, 10, 10, 81 that we typed in. Okay, that's cool, but um, we definitely have a web page here. So what I like to do when I first encounter a web page like this, um, I actually have like a, a bunch of different like little cheat sheet items that I like to go through. Um, I'm just gonna try to find that post real quick. So infiniteLogins.com is my website, but if you add this slash equals, you can actually do uh, a quick search term of like HTTP. And that should pull down this enumeration cheat sheet. And it's got a whole bunch of different commands that I like to run, but this one in particular is what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna copy this guy. And if we paste this in, what we're talking about here is we're using a tool called GoBuster. And this is great for like brute forcing directories on a web page, right? So like, you know, you might have like webpage.com slash login or login.php, or maybe you have like slash admin, right? And so instead of manually typing all those different items in, we're able to use a tool called GoBuster to do it for us. So we're gonna go bust through different directories. And then we just need to specify the website we wanna hit. And then we need to provide a word list to, to use. And I like this common.txt. Um, this one's really, really cool. It's a part of this sec list that you can get off of GitHub. Um, I've, actually, I think it's part of the Kelly repo. So you could just do like a, you could do like a apt git install sec lists, I believe. Um, and I think that that'll actually install it for you. And so, um, but yeah, we're going to come in and we'll do this w for word list and we'll just use common. I've already gotten installed on my machine and then dash, esh, uh, dash s <laughs> will be like the different status codes that we want to report on. So this just means like if the web server replies with a 200 okay or like a 300 redirect or like a 403, 404. In this case, we're not putting in 404 because that would be like a, a 404 not found, right? And if the page isn't found, I don't want it to tell me hey, this page is here, because obviously that's that's not helpful. So if the web server replies with one of these codes, that's going to go ahead and tell us. And so then we can just dive deeper manually and take a look at this. So what we'll do is I'll repaste this in, and then we'll just kind of modify this address here to go out to 10, 10, 10. Whoops, did a little bit too fast. Sorry, hold on. 10, 10, 10 dot 81. So we run this tool and just kind of right away, it, it gives us an error and it's saying to force processing, we could do this dash dash wildcard. So we could try that just to see if maybe that gets us past this little error message or whatever. We run this again and damn, check that out. So it's just coming back and it's just saying every web page that it's trying to request is replying with this status code of 200. So I mean, this tells us we can't really, at least not right now with my current configuration, we can't run GoBuster because uh, it's not helpful. It's just saying anything we throw at it is a successful web page. Um, so obviously, you know, we need a we need a different way if we want to try to brute force directories. So what I like to do at this point is spin up uh, uh, some sort of proxy like like Burp Suite, 
and we can try to route Go Buster through Burp Suite just to try to troubleshoot, troubleshoot this a bit and try to figure out where the problem is and, and what tweak we might need to make. So to do that is actually really easy. All you have to do is open Burp Suite up and under the proxy tab, we can come into options. And so you've probably seen this one before, right? This is the default proxy option that's configured with Burp Suite, where it's just saying anything come into our local host um, it, on port 8080 is going to be routed through Burp. But we can actually add our own uh, proxy here. So we can come in and we can make this whatever we want to. I can just make it like 8081, um, but it doesn't matter what you make it. As long as this is a port that's not used somewhere else on your machine, you can come in and you can make that port whatever you want. And then when it says bind to address, loopback only is fine for me because I'm only trying to route a tool that I'm running from my machine through a proxy that's running on my machine, right? I'm trying to route GoBuster on my computer through Burp Suite on my computer. But if the request was gonna come from some remote machine, maybe like a victim that I'm targeting, but I wanted to route its request through Burp Suite or something, then I may wanna come in and just say any interface or even like a specific interface, a specific address is gonna be where we want this to listen on. But in my case, Loopback only is perfectly fine. And then we'll just hit OK here. So what this means is if I were to go out to 127.0.0.1 port 8081, that should route through Burp Suite. And we can just kind of test this. We can come out to 127.0.0.1 port 8081 and check that out. It's got Burp Suite Community Edition. It's telling us that we're being routed successfully. but we could take this a step further. If I edit this guy, not only are we listening here, we can actually handle this request and tell it to redirect to a particular address. So I can actually force this to redirect to that machine that we're targeting, which is 10, 10, 10, 81 on port 80. So if we tell it to take any request coming in on localhost on port 8081, just forward that request off to this remote machine on port 80, and I don't need to force the use of TLS, I don't believe. I don't think we're using any sort of TLS, or at least that responding web server doesn't require TLS. So I think we're OK. And we can just press OK there. And we can test this to make sure it works by just coming in and pressing Enter on this guy, maybe. Oh, and intercept on. Let me turn that off. And check that out. So I didn't type in the IP address of 10.10.10.81 like I did the first time. This time I had 127.0.0.1. 8081. That then forwarded through Burp Suite, which then forwarded that off to that 10, 10, 10, 81 machine, which then seems to be redirecting to form.bard.htb. <laughs> okay, so I know that's confusing. Um, but so far, I hope that this is just kind of proving, all right, so now we're able to route something through Burp Suite. But so far, I've only showed you how to route Firefox through Burp Suite, and you probably already know how to do that. So how do we route a tool like GoBuster? Well, it's really already done. We've got Burp configured properly. We just need to adjust GoBuster to be looking at, at our Burp Suite proxy now. So if I come back, we can rerun this same command. I'll actually remove wildcard option here, and we can come back, and instead of sending it straight off to this remote host, I'm going to say send it to myself, but send it to that listening per port, which is 8081. OK, and we'll come back and we can actually turn our proxy intercept on. So that way we can catch the request before it gets sent. So I'm going to say enter. And we can see right away Burp Suite gets a request here from GoBuster. And it's just a regular Git HTTP request. I'll forward this and check that out. It says request to 10, 10, 10, 81. That's actually exactly where we want to send it to. And I didn't hit enter or forward quick enough. GoBuster just thought, hey, this isn't working. So I'm going to rerun this, and we'll see if we can be a little bit faster. I'll say forward. And now we've got another Git request here. I'll say forward. And again, now we're seeing something about this wildcard thing. Right, so that's super weird. What's going on? Well, I'm gonna rerun this one more time and I'll forward the first one, but on the second one, I'm actually gonna send this to repeater. And what this is gonna do is when we send this off, it's gonna give us a chance to actually read the response back. And we can see when we go out to get this weird random string 
it comes back and the web server is actually replying with a 200 OK message. And it looks like we've got all kinds of junk going on here. I don't know how to read that, but we can come in, we could say render. And now we can see, okay, this looks like it's some sort of image that it's replying back with. And it's saying, we're looking for your page, but we can't find it. So this kind of explains why GoBuster is behaving the way it is, right? It seems like no matter what, because this likely isn't a real page. And we could test this, right? We could come in and we could just say like, please subscribe dot php <laughs> right most likely on that machine there's not a php file called please subscribe so i'm going to send this off and when we do it comes back and it says yeah that's a that's a valid web page here here's a status code of 200 but when we render it it's just showing this image saying hey we can't find this web page so it seems like no matter what we what we send to it whether it exists or not it's coming back with a status code of 200 but what about something that we're pretty sure is going to exist? Like, what about a, just a basic, like, index, oh, I don't know, in .html? Try to send that off. And that comes back, looks like the same response. What if we do index.php? Whoops. Sorry, I'm messing stuff up here. .php. Send that. Okay, check that out. So that's that's actually doing something different. Here we got a 302 found, and it seems like a 302, that's, if, if you're familiar with response codes, that's actually a redirect. And it looks like it's redirecting us to this location, form.bart.htb, which actually makes a lot of sense, right? Because when we went to just the regular, you know, base directory, it was redirecting us to this host name every single time. So in this case, it almost seems like GoBuster would be better off only telling us when we have something like a 302 redirect um, and not like a 200 success. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this here. And instead of sending it off through my burp suite proxy, because I really don't need that anymore. I think I got everything I need. I'm going to send it off to this remote page, 10, 10, 10, 81. But I'm going to tell it to no longer show me success 200 messages. Really, all I want to see here are one of these redirect error codes. Um, but we'll just run this here, and we'll let that go for a sec. And check it out. It's not erroring out yet, um, which is a good sign, right? Because before, when we were running this, right away, it was saying something like, oh, you need to add the, the dash dash wildcard flag. Um, and it doesn't look like we actually need that this time. So it seems like it's going out to the page and it's making these different requests and it's saying, hey, does this exist? Hey, does that exist? Hey, does this exist? And as long as it's not replying with a 200 status code, it should come back and it should show us, hey, we tried to access this directory and it didn't reply with a 200 status code, but it did reply with one of these mentioned codes. You should probably check it out for a little bit more details. So I'm gonna pause the video here. This will take a second to run, but I wanna show you how this actually was helpful. So I'll pause and I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, so here we are a few minutes later and it actually came back and it found three different pages. Um, now again, I'm not doing like a walkthrough of the box or whatever. So I'll just kind of show you if I open up this one, that should return uh, an actual login prompt. Hey, check that out. So this was, uh, when I was going through this machine on Hack the Box, this was kind of the, the method that I used. And is this the only way to find out, you know, hey, you know, you, you only want to pull down redirects and you don't want to pull down success 200 codes? Of course it's not. But I found that this was just a great example of a good time to use something like Burp Suite to route your tools through. Um, and I hope that this was helpful for you. And you don't have to use only Go, Go Buster with this method, right? Any tool where you have the ability to specify the target, um, you can actually route through Burp Suite and you can use Burp Suite's features like intercept or respond or sorry, not responder, but uh, repeater. Um, and, and it might just give you more flexibility when you're trying to troubleshoot an issue or when you're trying to just try to understand how a web page works a little bit better. So that's it for this one, guys. If this was at all helpful, please do let me know in the comment section. Um, and if you like this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe for me, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. All right, peace out.